World Wildlife Fund announced a new initiative to prevent 10 million tons of global plastic waste from being tossed into landfills and oceans by big corporations. The six major companies have partnered with World Wildlife Fund include McDonald's, Coca-Cola, Starbucks, Keurig, Dr. Pepper, P&G, and Tetra Pak. These companies have committed to change the way they source, collect, and reuse plastics. A recent report outlines the complexity and brevity of the plastic problem. About one dump truck worth of plastic is put into the ocean every minute. Waste management was cited as one of the biggest problems for plastic recycling. Joining us now is Deputy Director of Sustainability, Research and Development for the World Wildlife Fund, Alex Grabowski. I think those numbers really sort of tell the tale of just how challenging this is. When we see that video as, as, as deep down, seven miles under the sea, and there's a plastic bag that's there and visible. It's not disintegrating. No, it's clearly it's a clearly plastic there. bag. So just give us an idea of what the challenges are that you're facing when it comes to plastic and how do you meet and defeat those challenges? Great, yeah, thanks so much for having me. Yeah, it's definitely a huge challenge, and I think that the fact that he saw plastic so deep under the ocean uh, really reinforces the fact that this is a problem that doesn't have any borders, right? It's everyone's problem, and we have um, a big challenge, because it's not feasible to just get rid of plastic, right? We need it for a lot of reasons, to keep our medicine sterile, to keep our food safe, and if we're not thoughtful about how we address this crisis, uh, we can cause another one, right, to our climate or to our forests, um, or by creating more food waste. So we really do think it's important to take a holistic perspective and really come together to solve this issue by fixing the whole system, by fixing this broken system we have. Uh, and that's why collaboration is so important, and that's why uh, we think it's really great um, that we are launching Resource today, because we think that this collaboration is what's needed to get us there. So Alex, these companies, these businesses that are committed to plastic reform are pretty big companies. Um, what are some of the areas of focus that businesses should shift their attention to? Sure. So there's three main ways that we think companies should be thinking about this. First is getting rid of the, of the things that you don't need, right? There are things that we can do without, and we should start thinking about that. Some things are simple, like I think the classic example is straws, um, that some people do need, but most of us don't. And then uh, beyond that, thinking about uh, business model innovation, right? How do we get the things that we use every day? How do we use them, and how do we dispose of them? How can we change that altogether? And the second one is to change um, the way we're sourcing what we do need, right? So responsibly sourcing plastic that we do still need, either through recycled content or responsibly sourced bio content. Uh, and then the, the last one is to uh, collect everything back and reuse as much as we can. So Vlad and I learned in a recent interview that we're sort of facing a little bit of a crisis when it comes to the things that we recycle. Uh, though across the country, many of us are recycling, we're not doing it very well, and it's becoming harder and harder to find anyone China, particularly, uh, who, who wants to buy our recycled goods. So a lot of the stuff ends up in a landfill, right? Yeah, the, definitely there is a big crisis going on right now, and I think it's also an opportunity. So um, the reason that um, we're having such a hard time finding someone to take our waste is that um, we're not doing a very good job uh, recycling it so that it's clean and quality. So I think that this is an opportunity to reinvest here at home uh, to, you know, really change the way that we're doing things. Yeah, I think it's hard because, I, you know, I'll just use New York City as the example, but I'm sure it mimics what you see across the country, which it often feels as if the recycling bins are perfunctionary. They're just there because uh, certain regulations encourage uh, landlords or others to have them available to, for example, apartment dwellers. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to know what goes in them because the signs are not clear, the, the containers are all different, different colors. So what should people think about if they want to be able to have a positive impact on the environment? Sure. So there's a couple things. So well, since you brought up recycling, I'll start with recycling, which is that, first of all, yeah, it takes effort um, to look up exactly what you can recycle in your own community. And it is different from community to community. I used to live in a city where across the street from me was actually the city line, and my neighbors could recycle completely different stuff than I could. Hmm. Um, and this is a reality in the United States right now, because we do recycling community by community. Um, so I think that is a big challenge for us, uh, definitely. So um, on that note, I'd say definitely look up your program, figure out how should you recycle where you live. And also, if you don't have access to recycling, because about 50 percent of Americans uh, are not able to recycle as easily as they can throw things away, you know, call your mayor, call your city council, get involved in your community and see what you can do to get it started. 
Um, other things you can do, you know, use reusable bags when you go to the grocery store. Put them in your car so you don't forget them. Bring your reusable water bottle. Um, and uh, I think that's a good start for anyone. Isn't it just more, doesn't it make more sense, given that in the United States we don't like top-down approaches to governing, we would rather have a local government or state government decide for us, and that means you have all these variations in right. the law. Does it not make sense, for example, Trader Joe's, which recently got rid of plastic bags, you could only get paper bags at Trader Joe's, and I remember I went in there and the guy said to me, yeah, no more, we're not doing this anymore because it's bad for the environment. The company made a decision, and that filters down to the consumers. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a, a, lot, a role for everyone to play in this, and business are really a key lever because they have control over what they design and what they do in-house, but also influence over, um, you know, what other people do. Like that Trader Joe's example, they were able to then talk to you uh, in your everyday life about this issue, right? So I think that there's a lot that companies can do, and they're a big lever, but everyone really has a role to play to follow through if we're going to solve this problem. Yeah, that's so true. Sometimes it's tougher for smaller companies, but when you have big companies like the ones that you have signed on, like McDonald's, mm -hmm. they're so massive, they can shift the way an industry works yeah, by their demands. Yeah, remember when we were demands. kids, we used to get the styrofoam from McDonald's now. Not it's anymore. Not anymore, right? Yeah. Uh, Alex Grabowski, thank you very much. Really important stuff. Thank you.